The arrival of a new brand is always exciting in any market and in India we have been used to that for some time now but when it comes to this particular brand the excitement reaches a different kind of level because it's also the arrival of a major automotive group for the first time in its true form here in India. I am of course talking about PSA and joining me now to talk about that and everything that follows from here on is uh, Mr. Carlos Tavares who is the CEO of Group PSA. Thank you. Hello, good afternoon. And, and it's great to see you back here in India after My a long pleasure. time. Um, and of course, getting to spend time with you, appreciate it. Uh, what I said, you know, it sounds of course nice to say it like that, but it is true in many ways. I mean, it's, it's that one big thing that we've been waiting for because uh, it is that one big automotive group that, that was sort of missing. Um, you have announced very early on the, the clear intention of what you want to do here. Of late, we've got more, clear, more clarity on that with Citroen now being announced as the brand. But, uh, but the obvious question, I mean, the, the importance of India in the long term for PSA's future growth strategy. Well, India is, uh, is paramount for our um, overseas development. First of all, because it's a highly demanding market. And uh, of course, we have opportunities with many of our brands, but uh, we also know that the Indian consumer is extremely demanding which is uh, something that is challenging us and we like that. We like to be challenged and we like to progress and push the limits to make our customers happy. Uh, this is the reason we have selected uh, Citroën as a highly human-centric brand, very much focused on being a trendy, cool, comfortable and, uh, and smart brand. And we believe that uh, this is the best brand, the warmest brand we have to uh, delight our Indian consumers, so we are very pleased and we are here for the long term. We'll take our time, this is a long term commitment. We have made frugal investments to make sure that we keep the business plan in the black, so that as long as we are in the black, we can continue to progress, improve our operations, improve the way we service our customers and improve the way we plan for our cars. Which actually leads me straight to the next point, which is about the necessity of the joint ventures with uh, Hindustan Motors. Um, one understands, of course, the logic of why you did it, but uh, could you have done it without that, you think, or maybe not as quickly? Well, possibly yes, but um, that was not our choice. Uh, we believe that uh, in, uh, in such a, a highly specific market, it's better to have a partner that helps us to uh, avoid the basic mistakes. Of course, big corporations like ours can make basic mistakes, and we certainly want to avoid that for the best benefit of our Indian consumers. And, uh, also to make sure that we start from a, a manufacturing footprint that already exists, which means that we can protect uh, our business plan to keep it in the black and hence give ourselves more time to progress in the marketplace and do the right things. So we are very pleased, in fact we are blessed with our partnership with uh, CK Biller. We think it's, it's uh, absolutely the right partner for us. We already have two plans in India, one for powertrain and uh, another one for vehicles. By the way, we are already exporting from our powertrain plant in Osur to the rest of the world, basically here uh, gearboxes for Europe. And uh, we are very pleased with what we are rightly now, right now doing. So, no, I think it's, it's, it's a must for us if we want to avoid ba basic mistakes. Um, going back several years now, I mean, even at the time when in, in your previous role, when I guess we last had you on, on camera on our channel, um, at the time, you know, it's easy to talk about what was happening in the market then because it was oh, the, the conversation was really about potential. A lot has happened since then in terms of the market proving to be more complex, more complicated, and perhaps uh, you know there's been a few other things that have kind of contributed to those targets that were being talked about then not really sort of being realized today. Um, is it better in a way to have that perspective, to have that experience that you've seen for some of the other brands and, and the tough journey uh, to be able to step in at this time and say, all right, we kind of know what not to do. Well, see, uh, I don't mean I to be flippant, but no, I you see why I'm asking it's, it's that. A great yeah. point. It's a great point. There is not a, a good timing and a bad timing to come into a market. The reality is that when you plan for uh, entering a new market, like the one we have here in India with the Citroën brand, uh, you cannot plan only for one product. Uh, and in this specific case for India, we are planning for four products in four years in a row which means this is a huge amount of work to be prepared, a huge amount of engineering, a huge amount of sourcing, a huge amount of planning, a huge amount of partnerships with, uh, with our dealers, with our uh, business partners. And this amount of work is not very much visible because we have been working in this program for the last three years. So it's 
three years of underground work to come up with uh, today's uh, brand introduction in, in India. So this is, this is what I think is what needs to be done. Of course, in the meanwhile, the markets are very volatile. Hmm. And you cannot predict volatility of the markets by nature, of course. Uh, as we cannot predict the volatility of the markets, then we just do whatever we need to do and do the right things right, and we see what happens next. So uh, yes, the markets will be volatile. Yes, the markets can go up, can go down. But anyway, as we are here for the long term, when you look at it from a several decades perspective, the point of introduction doesn't matter, as long as you keep a very low break-even point of the operations. Mm. If you keep a very low break-even point of your operations in a given market, then you can face ups and downs, you can face headwinds, you can face good news and bad news, because you always keep your operations on in the black, so you can always continue to move forward, even if, of course, from time to time, you can be frustrated by some uh, headwinds. All right. Um, sorry about that. Uh, the, uh, I mean, you partially answered what I was going to ask you about between the time you sort of green-lighted internally the India plan and today, of course, you, you're right. The market's been extremely volatile, very unpredictable, and almost uh, scary in, in some senses. But keep the eye on the long-term price. I get that. Having said that, uh, when you talk about a low break-even point, um, how do you define that? Is, does it come from conservative volume or share targets? Does it come from uh, having a very healthy export plan from day one? Now, I know you'll say it's both, but, but what, what's, what's at the heart of it, let's say? Well, it's, it's a lot of those things, but let me give you some examples. Uh, if we consider that we have in uh, India a uh, competitive supplier base, uh, it is quite clear that if you start sourcing parts in India, exporting for the rest of the world, the cost reductions that you are going to create are already paying for the local investments yeah. eventually that you'll have to do. If I take the example of our uh, power train plant mm. uh, in Osur, uh, basically this investment is already paid by the cost reductions that we are able to generate compared to other sourcings in the world, which then means that by itself, this specific investment is self-sustained, so I'll put it there. And at the same time, I'm going to use it to make a deep localization for the products I want to manufacture in India for the Indian market. In the same way, if I start by saying yes to my people, telling me we want a big uh, greenfield plant, I said no, <laughs> I want a small brownfield, brownfield plant. It was going to be much less investment at the beginning, but then I will keep my business plan in the black, and if it is successful, of course, I'm going to saturate the plant. I will make another one. So what that means is scalability and keeping a low break-even point with the frugal investments at the beginning gives you a much longer-term perspective because then you go step by step, but you always keep your operations in the black. So those are two examples, and of course, if I don't spend here 200 expatriates, it will also reduce my cost. So I want to use my local Indian talent to make things uh, even more efficient. It's a, a long list of things you can do to keep things uh, aligned. Uh, it's not easy, of course, and we don't always succeed. From time to time we fail, from time to time we succeed. Mm. But at least I think we have a very Indian vision of frugality and scalability that is the best way to plan for the long term. Is that kind of new for PSA? I mean, it's, it's uncharted territory because I know you are going into several new markets this year, starting this year. Um, but that kind of vision, which you're calling an Indian vision, is that, is that new territory, you think, for PSA? Uh, I think it's new for the industry. Mm. Let me give you another example. If I, when Others I claim to have tried that. That's why I ask. Well, <laughs> perhaps they succeeded, by the way. <laughs> and, uh, and that uh, That's good. <laughs> that's good if they succeeded. If not, then we have a problem. But you see, uh, let's take another example. Um, yeah. I was announcing the other day that we are going to bring the Peugeot brand to uh, North America. Mm. And I also announced that we bring the Peugeot brand to North America, but we will not build a plant over there. We'll start with sourcing our cars from China and or Europe. Why? Yeah. For the same reason. If I go and start by putting huge amount of investment on the table, then I will become extremely dependent on the volume growth, which means I will have to push the metal in the market, which possibly could happen with a lot of, uh, of incentives, which let then means a very poor profitability and then everything goes south instead of starting to be a, a, a virtuous uh, circle. So this is where we are. Uh, anyway, it's not rocket science. It's all about uh, having good sense, good judgment about what is really the core of what you need, mm -hmm. what is a waste and you should get rid of it. 
align all the stars in the same direction. Use the local talents, use the local cost competitiveness of where you are doing your business. Have the right partners to avoid basic mistakes and listen to the, to the consumer. Try to delight the consumer so that the growth is always the result of a well done job and not a goal by itself. The conservatism that you then point at, which is obviously good from a you know business perspective, from a strategy perspective as well, uh, three things that come to mind straight away. You've, you've talked about 100,000 cars in the, in the first phase, as it were. Uh, you have talked about the fact that there will be a significant interest from some of your um, you know, uh, concerns around the world who will probably want some of the cars that are built in India for their markets, uh, which means that that's already planned into the development of those models that you know they'll have appeal across markets and then you've also spoken about uh, you know going about and targeting what i know people are calling a small two percent market share but a significant number nevertheless um, how does hundred thousand add up to all of those plans together because if there's exports and robust sales in india uh, how do they well, do it's, it's very simple uh, i want my people to come back to me to say that uh, we don't have enough capacity this is something we know <laughs> how to manage yeah I want them to come back to me and say, hey, hey we don't have need enough more, capacity, yeah. please build more. And when we will be in that position, then we are safe because we, need that, we know that that additional capacity will really be needed mm. and will not be idle if we just put it up front and then pray for the best. Uh, the competitiveness of the markets in which we are now operating cannot afford anymore to uh, invest up front the capacities and then pray for the best. Because of everything we said, competitiveness of the markets, the complexity of the business models, the volatility of the markets, uh, the fact that the world trade is going backwards, a lot of new regulations are popping up that mm. uh, no, no one could predict. So we need to realize that uh, the automotive industry in the world is becoming a chaos. And because of this chaotic situation, we need to be planning in a conservative way. The three cars you showed us in that picture, which were covered, of course, which will come 2021, 22, and 23 here in India, and which have this great export potential, as you put it. Um, is it safe to assume that they don't currently exist in the Citroen portfolio anywhere? Yes, it is. All right. And so what part of that development and then subsequent testing prior to launch um, or proving, let's say, uh, will happen in India? Well, most of it, 90% of it will be uh, happening in India, and then we will have to validate in the destination markets, uh, what is specific to their uh, product adaptations, of course. But each of those products will be validated finally in their destination markets, but the core engineering will be made here. Okay, so one final point then as we wrap this up. Um, both from the perspective of these three products, as well as what's of course happening with all the markets that you're operating in, and uh, I'm talking about, of course, this little bit of an unknown, what happens with electric, what happens with some of the semi-autonomous features that are coming in and regulations as you put it. Um, how much of that gets protected in this plan? Well, in our industry... Because in India, for sure, we have no idea where it's going. Well, as Europe, you know. we don't have an idea either. <laughs> no, let's be, let's be yeah, honest. Yeah, absolutely. This is chaos. Yeah. Let's be honest. It, yeah. it, it's chaos. You see, regulations are popping up. Uh, I'm not talking even about... Uh, uh, automotive bans in some cities. Uh, one region of the world wants, wants to go this way, the other one goes this way. Uh, there is no alignment between the energy production and the automotive uh, mobility devices. No, th this is chaos. And uh, we, we really have to be very, uh, very uh, thoughtful in the way we do things and plan for different kinds of scenarios. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, the car companies right now are in a mode where either you bet on a certain technology and you bet the house on it, or you try to have um, flexible strategies like the one we have with the multi-energy platforms we have that can be petrol, diesel, electric, or plug-in hybrid powered. And this is the direction we have taken, is we have an engineering capability to make it flexible in terms of multi-energy platforms. We have developed our in-house technology, both for the electric vehicle powertrains plug-in hybrid powertrains. Uh, we have, of course, excellent diesel engines, excellent petrol engines. We were awarded four years in a row the best engine in terms of uh, the EB turbo engine. So we are blessed with all of those uh, assets and we are going to use it in a competitive way to adapt to a highly chaotic world, uh, which of course we do not control. So if you want to move quickly on electric, then you can still do that in India, you think? I'm not, I don't expect you to do it in the next one or two years, of course. It's but absolutely possible. We have all the technology we need, of course. It's possible. It's something that we will consider if the market conditions are supportive of that. 
can't wait to see all of it rolling out. Uh, you know why, of course. You, you, you know where I'm coming from on that. Thank you for your time. And uh, pleasure. pleasure to have the brand here and, of course, you as well. Thank you. Thank you for the chat. See you. Thank you. Of course, we told you about it weeks, months ago, that this will be the first car that kicks off Citroën's innings here in India. The C5 Aircross is brand new, and uh, that's actually the rationale being given by the management as well as to why it's been picked as that, as that first product, because it is brand new. It's just been launched in Europe in January, and uh, it kind of hits the sweet spot in a global sense because it's a compact SUV. Yes, this is what they would call compact, and think about it, so would we. In terms of attribute, shape, size, and segment, we're talking Jeep Compass, Hyundai Tucson, MG Hector, and um, of course, maybe you want to think about it as even an XUV 500 competitor, but look at the car. Is it really running as a rival to any of those? No, it's extremely individualistic, and that's true of all Citroëns. The face, extremely distinct. You know from a mile what brand this car belongs to. Very quirky, very different and distinct styling, I think is the hallmark of the brand and so of course I think the C5 Aircross exemplifies that to a large extent. Now we have to think very carefully about where this car will be positioned because there's two points here that are very crucial. The first is what uh, Citroen has said, anything it does will be at the heart of the market, very competitive and not premium. So it's a very specific intent and announcement in terms of positioning from the brand which means for all those people who think this is going to be ridiculously expensive, it's not or at least let's hope so. Also, the fact that this is not going to be a car that's made here, so this is going to be brought in and so yet be competitively priced. How does that work out in terms of strategy for the company? Possibly not your concern, but uh, yes, we still hold them then to the promise of a good price. What happens after that? Well, that's the thing. It's going to be joined by a family of compact vehicles, vehicles that will start from 2021, second half onwards, three new models, one each year from 2021, which are going to be positioned very, very competitively in India, but will be models made for the world and aren't models that currently exist in the Citroen lineup. That's the part to consider. Quick look on the inside now of this car. Now you might think that there's nothing very distinct about that styling, but think about it. Do you really see things like that on a daily basis? In terms of layout, in terms of, uh, all right, little door chime there. In terms of uh, just the use of materials and uh, design, it is very, very different. It is something that you haven't seen before. And we showed this to you, of course, before when we previewed the car for you. The part to take note of is that this is also a very roomy car. There's ample space. There's a good sense of space as well. And it's very premium in terms of its fit and finish. They've said it won't be positioned as premium, but I think that's the one thing that could be the USP, especially when you compare to the other cars in that segment. That this isn't going to come across as cheap or uh, badly built. It's going to come across as robust, well built, and I think that's the part that becomes more exciting in terms of engines. The car currently has a 2-litre diesel and a 1.2 petrol. We'll have to wait and see what comes to market here, of course. And remember that uh, it is going to be this car. Initially, there was a talk about how once production starts in 2021, will we get the facelift? No, it's exactly this car that's going to come to us because it would just be about a year and a half, maybe not even a year and a half old by the time it finally comes to our market. And that, I think, is a great flagship. It's a great, exciting thing from the brand and something that potential customers should really be watching out for.